Hi, I am Tapon Chakraborty. Welcome to my channel, Fly with Tapon. Today we will discuss how an aircraft generates lift. Sometimes fully loaded trucks, container of ships, or battle tank are loaded inside the cargo aircraft. With all these payloads, plus its own fuel, plus aircraft's weight, it becomes huge. But how easily it takes off and goes high in the sky and carries these loads in the different part of the world. How does an aircraft generate such a huge lift? Today we will look into it. To get the lift, the first condition is there should be airflow at a high speed over the aircraft and its wing. In other words, there should be a relative velocity of aircraft with respect to air, called airspeed. This is done by the forward movement of aircraft during its takeoff run. If there is a headwind, it will increase the airflow over the wing. That's why aircraft always take off and lands with the headwind. Headwind means airflow against the direction of aircraft's movement. Then comes the Bernoulli's theorem on fluid. Fluid means which is capable of flowing. So air also coming in this category. It says, if there is an increase in velocity of a fluid particles, its pressure will drop. Let us understand this with the help of this diagram. Here the fluid flows through the pipe. As in the center it is narrow, the fluid will have higher velocity here. Measure the pressure with the help of pressure gauge in narrow point as well as in the wide point of the pipe. On the narrow point, pressure will be lesser than the wide point. It proves the Bernoulli's theorem. Now keeping this in mind, the wing of the aircraft is designed. If you look at the cross section area of the wing, it looks like this. The upper side has a curved surface and the lower side is somewhat straight. When air flows over the wing, the upper air particles has to move at a higher velocity as the curved path is longer with compared to the straight lower surface. It causes a pressure drop on the upper surface and lower surface will have more pressure. So the resultant pressure will act upward and the aircraft will get lift. So many aircraft's body or the fuselage also designed keeping the same theory in mind. In such aircraft, the body contributes lift along with its wing. Beside this, the leading edge and trailing edge of wing having power operated control surfaces, known as slot and flap. They are very very useful device to produce extra lift when aircraft's velocity is less during takeoff and landing. When they will be engaged by pilot, the wing will turn into this shape. It has now more curve area on upper surface and surface area also increased and will produce some extra lift. And after takeoff, when aircraft speed will be increased further, it will be no longer required as at higher speed the wing lift is now sufficient to support the weight of the aircraft and these two control surfaces will be retracted back to their original position. During landing, these two control surfaces will be utilized again. But this is not the whole story. There are areas where Bernoulli's theorem doesn't hold good, like inverted flying of aircraft, where the car surface of the aircraft remains at the bottom, yet aircraft remains afloat in the air. Flat wing or symmetrical wing also contributes lift. In this area, we cannot apply Bernoulli's theorem, but they contribute a lift. Here comes the Newton's third law of motion. That is, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Now, let's see how an aircraft takes off with the help of these two theories. Here is one aircraft preparing for takeoff. First, it will start its takeoff run. With the help of carb aerofile wing, flap, slot, it will generate lift according to Bernoulli's theorem. But it will not leave the ground. And at the final moment, the pilot will turn the elevator in this direction. Now comes the Newton's law. The airflow will be diverted upward and airflow will push the elevator downward and the nose of the aircraft will go up. Due to this movement, the angle of attack of the wing will increase. Now the wing will strike the airflow at a higher angle and air will be pushed downward. And in opposite reaction, 
the air will push the aircraft wing upward and the aircraft will get airborne. See this video till the end and notice the movement of the elevator by the pilot at the last moment and aircraft takes off. If you feel the information I shared with you is valuable and interesting, then please consider subscribing to my channel.